Mr. Wilder there. Okay. Ready to proceed? Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to this online hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Ottawa. The Committee of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial tribunal appointed by City Council to make decisions on certain types of applications under the Planning Act. My name is John Blatherwick. I'll be chairing this hearing today with me and my fellow panel members, Stan Wilder, Heather McLean, and Michael Wildman. Please take note that this video conference is being live streamed on YouTube. The video will be archived along with today's agenda on the city's website. Before we begin, we have a few items to outline for your information. While the issues surrounding development in the city are broad, our mandate is quite limited. The committee cannot consider aspects of the proposal that are not related to the required variances. Noise, pollution, property maintenance, property values, prosecution for illegal construction, personal comments regarding neighbors, agents, or applicants, and additional variances without proper public notice. If there is an identified need for an additional variance or variances, including an increase in the extent of the relief required, the recirculation of the application is required. As part of the statutory public notification requirements, each applicant was required to post a sign on the property and file a statutory declaration confirming the sign posting. Uh, we only have that stat deck for one of those applications, so I will be administering the, uh, the verbal oath to all applicants' agents today in order to proceed with their uh, applications. Regarding quorum, if this is lost during the hearing due to technical difficulties, the proceedings will be paused to allow time for the resolution of the issue. Failing the ability to reinstate quorum, hearing of the items remaining will resume at the outset of the next regularly scheduled meeting of the committee. In terms of the hearing process, listed on the agenda and appearing on the screen are the applications we will hear today. For the sake of efficiency, the committee may deal with agenda items in a different order. Note that the committee members have reviewed the application materials prior to this hearing and any written submissions received in support or in opposition. In addition, the committee will hear today oral submissions from any interested parties as part of our proceedings. The committee may ask for a brief presentation by the applicant, followed by questions from the members where clarification may be required. The public submissions portion of the hearing will then begin and any interested parties will be invited to make their submissions to the committee. Panel members may then ask follow-up questions where additional clarification may be required. When you are called upon to provide your comments, we will ask you to do the following. Start with stating your name and municipal address for the record. We may ask you to spell your last name. Then begin your submission by addressing your comments to the panel members. You may ask questions, but please direct them only to the chair. Please limit your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Any exceptions will be at the committee's discretion. Once all interested parties have had an opportunity to address the panel, the public submissions portion of the hearing will then be closed. The committee will then make an oral decision to either grant or deny the application. The committee may also choose to reserve its decision. In such case, the panel will deliberate further on the evidence presented immediately following adjournment of the public hearing. In either case, the committee will send within 10 days of its decision and to all the parties and those who have requested it, a written notice of decision that sets out the reasons for the decision. All decisions of the committee are subject to a 20 day appeal period during which the decision can be appealed to the Ontario Land Tribunal for a fee. Before we begin, are there any declarations of interest for any of the panel members regarding this hearing or the hearing of panel two or panel three? I see none. We have no minutes to confirm, so we'll move to the request today for adjournments, and we have a number of them. First of all, uh, before we do that, on the, uh, the last hearing, we had an item 480 McLeod Street. Uh, this was a permission application to permit two additional rooms in a 16 room rooming house. The questions were asked regarding whether or not the applicant actually needed to apply for permission. The applicant has since uh, dealt with the city legal department and building code services and uh, the departments have determined that no permission was required. 
Therefore, the application for 480 Met Clarence Street has been withdrawn. So the first adjournment request we have before us today are for items three and four, 305 Curl Avenue. Uh, these are consent and minor variance applications to subdivide the property into three parcels, which will consist of two new townhouse dwellings and the existing two-story dwelling. And the agent for the applicant, I believe is Mr. Kalitza um, and the planning department are the, uh, the body who has requested this adjournment. Mr. Hamilton, to the adjournment, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there are limited services available in Irene Crescent. Therefore, all of the units within the interior of the lot will have to be serviced through Curel. Uh, engineering staff are looking for additional time uh, to speak with the applicant and receive additional information just to make sure that all appropriate servicing widths can be met. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Kalitza, you're the agent for the applicant. Uh, I am, Mr. Chairman. And for the record, your address, please. 76 Chamberlain Avenue. Okay, and to the adjournment request. Um, Mr. Chairman, just, just before I do that, I, I just noticed on uh, my last reading of planning's comments that there is one variance missing uh, that was requested and is part of the uh, notice of, um, of uh, minor variance application. Um, so I thought I'd bring that up. Um, and it's, uh, it was variance J of the, um, of the uh, notice that went out. So I'll, I'll just, I guess I can just leave that with you. This is the variance regarding a double wide driveway? Correct. And you're saying what, Mr. Kalitza? I'm saying that um, planning's comments reviews, reviews the variances that are requested uh -huh. and variance J is not included in those lists of uh, variances for uh, 686 Irene Crescent. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Kalitza is correct. It was omitted. Uh, it should be in the staff report and will be provided on the return. Okay. And do we know what the staff reports, the staff's position on that variance would be? By department standard, we generally don't support double width driveways. Um, it will largely come down to the conversations that result from engineering. Uh, and if there are any impacts on the site, which I don't expect at this time. Okay. All right. So I think, okay. uh, Mr. Chairman, then with regards to the, uh, to the adjournment, uh, just a bit of background information. We received comments um, at the end of the day yesterday. So we still, we don't know what these um, concerns are with regards to engineering and more specifically servicing. Um, well, I guess, I guess you'll know Mr. Kalitza once we adjourn, you'll have time to do that. Um, yeah, I, I guess I will, but I, I just want to give you a bit of background yeah. um, that we started this conversation with engineering with regards to servicing six months ago mm -hmm. uh, because there are not services on Irene. So for this project to move forward, it was imperative that we um, provide services in an easement. Um, and um, at that time, we have an email from engineering saying that that was uh, permissible. So um, can anyone share any light on, on why this is requested? Perhaps Mr. Perhaps Mr. Hamilton can answer your question, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you. To provide a little bit more information, my understanding is that uh, engineering is looking for details on how the units will be serviced uh, just so we know which appropriate conditions apply and do not apply um, so that we don't apply something that we need to remove later. Right. Well, I guess uh, we we would have to adjourn it. Just uh, I'll have to say I'm we're a bit disappointed that we haven't heard anything about this until the eleventh hour. Um, uh, it's very difficult for us to do our business without 
having information and some communication. So yeah. I'll just leave your, it. Uh, your concerns are, not, are noted, Mr. Kalitza. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, how long is this going mm -hmm. to take in your estimation? I suspect that all information can be provided and the issues can be resolved this week, latest Monday. Okay, so that's, we look at a hearing date, then uh, October the October the fifth would be appropriate. I believe so, Mr. Kalitza, You're okay with a, an adjournment to the fifth of October? Um, yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And, uh, and Mr. Mr. Belmar, we have space on the agenda on the fifth of October for this this application. Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. With that, uh, I'll. Uh, all in favor of adjourning this application until the 5th of October to resolve the issues. All right, applications adjourned until October the 5th. Thank you, Mr. Kalitza. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you. All right. The next application that's up for adjournment is item number, number five. 368 Tweedsmere Avenue. And this is a minor variance application to permit a reduced rear yard setback for bicycle sheds and increase the number of units from 12 to 16 permitted for a low rise apartment building. And I believe Ms. Hill is the applicant's agent. Hi. Ms. Hill, Ms. Hill your address for the record, please. 414 Churchill Avenue North. Okay, and you, uh, you requested this adjournment, so please articulate your, uh, your request. Yeah, it's come to our attention that there's some uh, difference of opinion about the interpretation of the, the bay window uh, requirements in zoning. Mm -hmm. And we want to do a little bit of due diligence because we do have a uh, bay window in the front that would be affected. All right. Um, how is this going to be resolved? Is this going to end up as another minor variance or will this be a design change? No. To the um. Hopefully it will just be a clarification of wording just to be sure that everything's okay. Um, it it, if it isn't, then we'll have to decide whether we make a change to the building or whether we request another, uh, another variance. But um, we, um, we need to move ahead quickly. So I, uh, I think we would just be forced to, to make a change to the building. All right, and the, if, if there's a design change, you're gonna have to submit new elevations to uh, to staff and to us. Uh, what are we looking at as far as timing is concerned? Oh, we can get this done in the next couple of days. Um, it's not a big change, it's just the this one bay window. So uh, we're ready to go back on the next agenda for sure. Mr. Hamilton, um, that, that's sufficient time for the department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The ch changes to the site plan to bring it into compliance are quite minor, um, That that should be doable. Okay, and Mr. Belmar, we have space on the October the 5th agenda for this application? Yes, yes Mr. Chair. Okay, so Ms. Hill, the 5th of October, you can get this resolved by then. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of adjourning until the 5th of October. Yeah. All right, adjourned until October the 5th. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Thank you. Okay. Right. The next application that is up for adjournment, item uh, item seven forty four thirty six Athlone Avenue, uh, is a minor variance application to permit reduced setbacks to the rear yard and bicycle sheds, a reduced rear yard landscape buffer, and reduced parking for the construction of a low rise apartment building. And I believe it's a department that has uh, asked for this uh, for this adjournment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this adjournment was for the same reason as the previous file uh, with respect to the bay window and the compliance factor that that um, has on the front yard setback. Okay. And Ms. Hill, you're the agent for the applicants. Um, I am. You're in, you're in agreement with the adjournment? Yes. Okay. Um, and the estimated time for this issue to be resolved? The same, please. Mr. Belmar, we still have space on the 5th of October? Yes, we do, sir. Okay. We have a number of uh, speakers on this uh, on this item. Uh, 
but uh, and if they wish to say if they wish to speak on on this, it's just to the adjournment. I believe Mr. and Mrs. Moran had their hand up. Oh, I'm supposed to put my sorry. And you are, sir. Uh, this is Larry Wong, four forty four 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 zero okay. Dawson, for the record. Yeah, uh, for the oh. for the adjournment to the adjournment, Mr. Wong. Well, no, I have to figure out if I want to attend the next session. You know, I already put in some opposition for the uh, two variances, and I really don't know the best method now. Well, if we adjourn until the 5th of October, we're back up and dealing with this item then. Okay. You're, uh, you're up. Your note, your con your concerns are in the, uh, you're in the record. So, okay. So is it possible that I can just update what I wrote already and not attend the session or is it important that I do? If you feel that there's extra, extra material you'd like to submit, you have another, another several weeks to do so, sir. Okay. Well, the only thing that I noted on the on the site survey was we're not dealing with the. We're not dealing with. The, we're dealing with the German only, sir. Okay, so I'll I'm, I'll I'll take that into consideration, and you right. might see me or not. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have several other speakers that wanted to speak to the application, but we're dealing with the adjournment. Do I any then wish to speak to the adjournment? Mr. And Mrs. Morgan. Mr. Lewis, yep. Ms. Davies. Uh, stop my video. Start your video. Hi, sorry. And you are, sir? I'm uh, David Morgan. I live at 440 Athlone Avenue, immediately to the south. I just up to your property. And to the adjournment on this application, sir. I'm just seeking uh, confirmation that uh, we will get a detailed description of why this item has to be adjourned. I don't understand. Uh, have you been listening to the conversation so far? I have. Okay, you've heard Miss uh, you've heard Miss, Miss Hill explain why she needs the adjournment. I was unable to follow that. I just wonder if we can. Miss Hill, if you wouldn't mind rearticulating that, please. The definition of the bay window in the zoning is quite complex, um, perhaps open to different interpretations. Um, I have been informed that the staff who review permit applications have a different in interpretation of it than I do. And um, in, in which case their, it, their interpretation would, would render the, the bay window non-compliant uh, to, the, to the bylaw. So I need to figure out first of all whose interpretation is correct, and then if necessary, correct the windows to, to bring it into compliance. Perhaps it's just best for me to speak with Ms. Hill offline. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm for sure. German. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Give okay. me a call, David. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, um, Mr. Belmar, we have space on the fifth of October. You saying you were saying. Still? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So we'll adjourn this application until the 5th of October, Ms. Hill. All in Thank favor? You. All right. Application's adjourned. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. And there is no adjourn re adjournment request for. Uh, for the next application, but we'd like to call item number two forward. And this is a, uh, the consent application to subdivide the property in two separate parcels for an existing semi-detached dwelling currently under construction. Um, the planning department has, has noted the fact that uh, there may be a condition of, of approval requiring the applicant to either apply for a minor variance or a zoning bylaw amendment for the severed and retained lots um, planted there. Yes. Okay. All right. The department could uh, please articulate the uh, their concerns with this application. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Upon review of the submission materials, it was noted that the semi-detached dwelling is not in compliance with the zoning bylaw with respect to the front yard setback 
And while staff have no concerns with the proposed severance of the property, a minor variance should be obtained prior to the consent being finalized. Therefore, staff have added a condition to the approval of the consent to reflect the required zoning compliance. So as far as the department's concerned, we need a minor variance with this application. That's correct, Mr. Chair. All right. And I believe the agent is Mr. Stoltisari. Can't hear you, sir. Still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. If you could give okay. us your address for the... Uh... Yes, it's Mario Stalteri, S-T-A-L-T-A-R-I, okay. 170, 174 Glebe Avenue, Suite 103, Ottawa, K1S2C7. All right. And you've heard the, that the department articulate the fact that there's a, there looks to be a need for a minor variance. Yes. Uh, in addition to the consent. Uh, that's what that's what they're saying. Yes. Okay. I know. Uh, I know a couple of the uh, the members of the panel had some concerns about this, Mr. Wildman. Not not so much concern, more about process, um, and and perhaps uh, the staff would be the, the best to explain it. When you see something like a zoning bylaw amendment, that's a pretty substantial um, thing that has to be done. Uh, and when you look at the minor variance application, and I realize that those are both two paths that can be followed, but I think it's safe to say that uh, that um, it's probably most appropriate for this to go through the minor variance uh, process. Um, and uh, if if the applicant has no concerns with uh, you know recognizing that that needs to be done, then um, from our perspective, we don't have, I don't think, or at least I don't, uh, a major concern with conditioning the application. So uh, under that scenario, um, I guess, uh, well, I guess for the consultant as well, uh, do you have any concerns with uh, a condition that provides for a requirement for a minor variance application? I, I would like the, I have no condition on, on having to have a minor variance per se, but I'd like it worded a little bit differently if possible. And if I can explain, uh, I did my front yard setback per written instructions from the city of Ottawa, okay? The committee approved when I went for my first minor variance, which was lot width, they approved my site plan. And what I did is I built this house. Uh, so it's the average distance of the two neighbors which is proper planning that they use all the time in the glee. Nobody had any concerns from the city at that time that my, the zoning says I should be three meters from the street. I am 3.6 meters from the street. Now they're saying I have to get a minor variance. My issue with the minor variance is time. I'm ready to go to market. Okay. And the market's not going the right way. That's not your issue. That's an issue I have to deal with. And this problem was caused by the city, not me. Okay. What I would like, if possible, is uh, the application is going in today, okay, uh, for the minor variance. They, they put in there a condition that um, if the minor variance is approved, like if you guys accept this subject to getting the minor variance, can you guys already approve the, the distance of the building from the street? Okay, so it, it was, you, were, you guys were happy with it back then. If everybody's happy with it now, can we not put a notice out and if nobody puts any complaints in, it's automatically done. That's not the way it works. It can't happen. No. I guess I would say that I think there's some shared culpability when when uh, uh, there's an issue like this that happens. Uh, people retain consultants to advise them. And, uh, and uh, I think what's happening. Oops. Happening here is there's an effort being put to do, sir, is uh, for you to uh, consent to the uh, to this condition. It would it would uh, make things move, I think, fairly swiftly through the process. Uh, thank you, you, Mr. Chair. When you say swiftly, if I put the application to the date, do you know when it's going to get heard, Mr. Belmar? How soon before we this could be on uh, on a committee agenda? So, oh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm informed that uh, the agent has filed his application this morning. 
Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't the correct form. He used a consent application form as opposed to a minor variance form. So we're getting that corrected today. Yes. I also understand that, uh, by the way, the, uh, the planning department uh, will be covering the cost of this minor variance application, um, given the previous advice given to the agent. Okay. And so bottom line, in answer to your question, uh, Mr. Chair, the application will be scheduled for a hearing as soon as we receive the correct application form and the, and the, uh, and the fee, payment of the fee. Sorry, on, on, on that, on, on my apologies. So, sorry, continue. So, so it, it'll be scheduled as soon as possible, as soon as uh, all the information has been received and, uh, and uh, as well as the fee. Okay, if I could, on that note, I have an email from the city that said that they're going to pay the fee and that they want the department to know that, that they shouldn't wait for the fee, okay, to, to start this process. But that's, that's not the case. I will come in today and bring the fee in, okay, and then get the money back from the city. I, I, I don't know if it's going to take 30 days for the city to give you guys the fee. We can't, well, and we can't start, we can't really start the process until such time as the check is in hand. So, so I got to come in today and give you a check. So if I give well, you a check this afternoon, when when can we be scheduled? But we'll coordinate uh, with the, uh with uh, Mr. Steltari uh, offline, Mr. Chair. We'll, okay. we'll make sure that this uh, item is scheduled as soon as possible. Okay. So I think the best thing Mr. Steltari to do is then that we'll deal with the consent application and the minor variance application concurrently. Okay. And with luck, it'll be, uh, it'll be a month or so. Wait, wait, what, what, what do you mean by concurrently? Together. We'll deal with the app. We'll deal well, with. Well, why can't we do what the, what the city said? Because you're not you can't move forward on this until you have your minor variance application. So no, but the city, the city is willing to have it as a condition that I have to get the minor variance. We can deal with these two together on, on the same day. Consent and the uh, and the variance, which is normally what we do. I think that's the best course of action, quite frankly. <clears throat> I'm far more comfortable dealing with the consent and the variance at the same time. So, I've heard from Mr. Mr. Bill Meyer that they will expedite. I'm glad to see that the city is uh, is covering the cost on this. Uh, it's unfortunate that this, is, this has happened, but it happens from time to time. Anyway, um, we will uh, <clears throat> adjourn this this application, I think, sine die. Well, can I, can I ask one question? Because this, this the, the, part of the, the, the severance is I have to uh, pay cash in Luke Parkland. Mm -hmm. Does that pro process wait now for another 30 days? Because we, we don't have the approval for severance? I don't think you have to pay the cash in Luke Parkland until the severance is approved. No, no, no. But to start, they have to get an appraisal of that. Does that mean they're not going to start that process until we have the severance? I have no idea. Can miss can the, the city of Ottawa? I think I'd, I'd suggest you talk to the planning department about that. As far as we're concerned, though, we're going to be dealing with these two items together, and hopefully as uh, as soon as possible. So, to the to the adjournment, signy die until uh, until these matters are resolved. We'll have a variance and the consent together. All in favor? Adjournments, uh, applications adjourned. Signy die. Thank you very much. All right. We will now move to the regular item on the on the agenda. Just bear with me for a second. This item we'll deal with on the uh, on the regular agenda is item number one, 44 and 46 Imperial Avenue. 
the consent application is to sever the property into two separate parcels of land for the existing semi-detached dwelling. And I believe Mr. Segreto is the is the agent for the application for the applicant. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, committee members. Mr. Segreto. First, we'll start with the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do swear. Okay. And this is a uh, this is a simple consent application. However, there are some questions from the members of the committee. Ms. McLean. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two questions, Mr. Segreto. Um, it's it, this is creating an irregular shape parcel, um, and it sort of carves out part four and leaves a small strip of land at the rear of part four. Um, and so, I just wonder if you could address that. And the second question had to do with the right of way over part five. Your letter indicates that it's proposed to create a right of way over part five. And I'm just wondering why we don't have those applications with these ones. So if you could address those two points, thank you. This, this application was uh, approved approximately uh, four or five years ago. And due to the fact that the owner never, um, never uh, uh, finalized the conditions of severance we're in front of you here today, so basically what I did was I took the exact same uh, documentation that we had four or five years ago with respect to the right-of-ways, so on and so forth. And the right-of-ways are part three, part five. Um, uh, it's, it's a right-of-way for access to the rear yard for parking for the garages for uh, 44 and 46 Imperial. And in addition to that, the neighbors, which is 36 and 38. Um, the only the only thing that I can say on this thing here is is that we I spoke with the lawyers this morning, Mr. Wong, with respect to 36 and 38. They were just concerned very slightly that the bump out from part two, if you can put up the the uh, the uh, draft reference plan, you can clearly see it. And what they were saying is is that it wasn't wide enough there. If they can just make that a little bit wider approximately 14, 15 inches wider, where the bump at is, you can clearly see, um, uh, yeah. And then where the two arrows are, there's like a two point, uh, two point, I can't read the numbers there, but they were just wondering if we could make that a little bit bigger because the intent is obviously to sell these two, uh, these two units and that there would be no concerns with the neighbors next door. Uh, Ms. McLean, so that's that's my understanding of it, but the application is identical to what we did uh, uh, three, four years ago, which was approved uh, back then. I don't know if I've answered your question. I don't think you have. Can you tell me if part five has been created or if you're- Yes, it has. It has been created and, and it was created uh, uh, a few years ago with the uh, neighbors next door. It is created, it is a right away to the back. This has been a right away to the back. Part three and part five are right of ways that have been established since the beginning of the construction of these buildings, which were done maybe 40, uh, 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. So it's your letter says you propose to create a right away over part five. Well, I'm, well, it's an existing right away. I'm, I'm proposing that my guys are still gonna be able to uh, have access to the back. They've got to go over part five. It's an existing, part five is an existing right away as it stands. Okay, and then uh, thank you for that then. And then just uh, part four is part of a garage. Do you have any photographs of the bump out in that garage at the back? Because the garage seems to have a length of 13 feet and then there's this small area of about two feet. That's, that's going to stay with part one. And I'm just wondering about um, I, creating such an irregular shape parcel there. You know, again, Ms. McLean, with respect to that, that garage was built at the same time that the, the houses were built back in the day in the 1940s, I guess, 50s. With respect to that two foot bump out in the back, I have no idea why Stantec has created that part one to go along the side, along the back of that. I have no idea. So uh, I, I can't answer that question for you. Any idea why part two is such an irregular shape? <laughs> again, again, Mr. Blathwick. No, I have, uh, no, no, I, 
Yeah. I have no idea why. And I, mm. I guess what the fear is there is, is that uh, I know that you cannot put any fences on a right away or whatever, but I guess along that side, because it forms part of the backyard, I think what some of the concern might be is, is that if someone were to put a fence an inch or two along that way, it would, you know, it would create a little bit of ha havoc. Therefore, one of the reasons is, is to move that line over possibly uh, 15 inches or a foot and a half or whatever by 10 feet, it would give a little bit more flexibility to the neighbors next door so they can drive through and park their cars in the, in the back as, uh, as my clients have it. But you know what I mean? Uh, it, that's the way it was, that's the way it's registered, that's the way it, it was presented to us and that's what we have in front of you here today. My client, speaking with my client, I did discuss this with him this morning. Uh, he did say that if it comes to a point that if we were to uh, adjust that line a little bit, uh, 15, 16 inches, whatever, by 10 feet, my client doesn't have any issues with that so ever. And we could put that as a condition of severance. And then we would revise the plan accordingly. And then we would file it with the registry office, so on and so forth. Ms. McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to suggest that we adjourn this application and get some uh, some answers to the questions that uh, have been raised here. I'm not comfortable in knowing whether there's a bump out or not, not a bump out. What the width of that area, the width of that right away is, why there's a strip of land left behind Part Four, what the garage looks like, and whether you can park a car in that garage. So I think we need some answers. You know. Mr. Tigato, please. Well, I, 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 I kind of respect, respectfully disagree here. The garages have been there since day one. And that this severance or this, uh, this plan has been created and approved in, that, in that, I believe it's 2017 or 2018. There were no issues at that time. The only issues that have arised was an issue of concern with the bump out a little bit. But that bump out has been like that since day one. And access in and out continues that way. Um, if, if, you, if it need be, then let's adjourn it for two weeks and I'll get these answers and I'll get back to you. Mr. Wildman. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, if staff could just uh, come online. Um, normally, the fire separation, Mr. Segreto would, would be familiar with this. The fire separation is a condition. Uh, this time it isn't. I'm just wondering, can you explain why this time it isn't? Well, the building has been- No, not, not you, Mr. Segreto, staff. Oh, sorry. Uh, and if you have something to add, by all means, after. Sure. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I believe this was in place by Building Code Services as a comment. I'm not aware why this isn't a condition, but I can get that answer for the next hearing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Segreto, do you have anything to add? Are we talking about the fire separation between the two buildings yeah. right now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So that's, that's. I, it's uh, normally a condition and I'm just it, curious it, as to why it's not a condition this time. That's fine. We can, we can address that as well. I don't have an issue with that. Okay. Okay, well, thank you, uh, staff and Mr. Segreto. Yeah, so I think in an abundance of caution, we will adjourn this for uh, two weeks. We still have space on that agenda on the 5th of October, Mr. Belmar. Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Although it's beginning to fill up. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a later dinner that day. <laughs> All right. All right, Mr. Segreto, what we'll do is... Uh, we will adjourn this until the 5th of October. I think that gives you sufficient time to resolve any issues. Yes, no problem. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of adjournment until the 5th of October on this item. Okay. We are adjourned to the 5th of October, 44 and 46 Imperial. Okay, next item on the agenda is item number six. This is uh, 296 Metcalf Street, this is a permission application. 
It's a permission application to convert first and second floor of the existing building currently used as a medical facility, limited to audiologist offices only, to a medical facility which will allow for a dental office and a dental laboratory. The residential units will remain in the basement and on the third floor. And Sinclair, I believe, is the agent for the applicant. That is correct. Um, uh, Sinclair, can you before, before, yep, yeah, I can hear you. Before we begin the, uh, the oath, uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing? and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. I do, And I have filed a statutory declaration with the committee this morning. OK. All right. So this is a permission to change the use, basically. Correct. So uh, the, histor um, the history of this application is that there was an existing application to um, uh, with the committee in 2008 to have the ground floor and second floor of the building used for um, a medical facility. Mm -hmm. That application was approved, but at that time it was limited to a medical facility with audiology uses. The other two uses in the building are um, residential in the basement and in the third floor. Those will remain. Um, so uh, the zone designation uh, for this particular application is in a, a residential R4 zone uh, density. Um, and the, there is, um, so a medical facility is uh, not, um, a, a permitted use within that existing zoning, but there is uh, the committee's decision. And then there is a long history of this property being used uh, on the ground floor and second floor for medical offices. So there's, it's changing a legal non-conforming use to from a very restrictive audiology medical facility use to a more general that's more conducive to serving the community and consistent with um, the, the zoning, the official plan, uh, existing official plan and the new official plan as well. Um, I have provided uh, various um, comments on the, the, uh, the sections and secondary plan policies uh, in the application for um, demonstrating the, the continued use um, and, and the more uh, consistent use uh, uh, with developing policies under the new official plan for encouraging 15 minute neighborhoods and for uh, uses that are more mixed in nature and appropriate for this particular area. Um, Okay. Uh, question from the uh, from the committee is uh, what your your applicant's position would be if we uh, if we granted the medical facility but limited it that to a dental office and a um, and a uh, what's the other one dental laboratory only. Yeah, that would be restrictive. Um... Uh, with the way the official plan is evolving and for uses in that area, we felt it would be more restrictive. Obviously, that is uh, that is what the new uh, owner proposes to make use of that um, those two floors. Mm -hmm. um, so that would that would be um, acceptable, but they're really. Um, uh, with changing uses and to allow for greater servicing of the community, we really feel a medical facility is more appropriate. Thank you. Mr. Wildman, you had a comment? I just wonder if member uh, McLean might wish to elaborate. Um, I think she could do it a little more eloquently than me, but um, sort of the path. Um, we do need to, uh, as, as we discussed, uh, Mr. 
uh, Joe, to clarify um, some of the language yeah. uh, around this in the sense that it, it was not used as a um, medical facility, it was a, an audiologist. And perhaps um, Ms. McLean would do a better job of sort of walking us through that. But I think that explains a little better as to why we want to, or we're posing the question of dental office and dental uh, laboratory. And I would just, uh, I would appreciate Ms. McLean's uh, input on that. Um, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just uh, wondered if we, the committee shouldn't be amending the, the notice, the, the reading of the notice. My, my reading of the 2008 Committee of Adjustment decision was that they amended the, uh, the request and, and they dropped uh, the reference to medical facility and um, made it, uh, it, restricted it strictly to an audiologist's office. And, um, and in doing so, I'm just wondering here if, um, so the first paragraph of the notice um, should read that the um, currently used as a, and we should delete medical facility, limit it to, and it's currently used as an audiologist's office. And, th and that corresponds with the 2008 decision. And then under relief required, um, I think it should read rather than to expand the legally non-conforming, I think it should be to change the legal non-conforming audiologist office to a, and this is where the question came in, uh, Ms. Sinclair, uh, whether we wanted to use the general medical facility use or more in line with the 2008 decision, restrict it to the proposed dental facility. And I guess um, under the test for the permission, um, they're not the same as the minor variances tests. Um, you look at the, the desirability and the impact on the surrounding area. And, and uh, does a general medical facility have more of an impact or what's the parking or what's the patient count as opposed to a limited use as a dental facility? So those sort of were the observations um, that we were, we were having on the application. Right. If I may respond, um, yes. So I I I do agree with you that it the wording expand is probably not the best wording in the in the notice. That it is just a change uh, to a use. Um, I would not uh, su suggest that we limit it it to just a dental practice. Um, it's not a big space. It's just the ground floor and the the second floor. It's an older home like setting. Uh, the the to I think each floor is about on an average about twenty five hundred square feet. So it's not like a like a, a huge um, change. There is about twenty parking spaces on site to accommodate. So it's it's uh, so it it serves those purposes as well. Um, I think with uh, the ability to have complementary practices, uh, medical practices within um, a, a, an area, it makes more sense to allow for a medical facility and changing uses over time as opposed to just a dental practice, restrictive. Uh other than this, other than the audiologist office that's there at the present moment, is there any other commercial operation in that building? There is another uh, commercial operation. I think I believe it's um, a laser, like it's medically related. It's a laser okay. um, uh, use. And, and how many how many uh, residential units in the building? Two, uh, uh, third floor. There's a unit and basement unit. Okay. 20 parking, 20, 20 parking spaces for a dentist's office is not a lot of spaces, and especially if you have two medical medical operations uh, in the building. I can put uh, I can put a, 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 a increased parking demand, and you don't really have a lot of supply in the yeah. uh, in the immediate neighborhood. The intent is to have one dental practice with run by two um, 
two dentists. So it, it's, it, it is one practice on both floors. Okay. I think at the beginning of this discussion, you said that uh, you would, uh, you would accept if we, uh, if we, uh, if we granted this permission and limit it, limited it to dental office and dental laboratory. Uh, I have not discussed that option with clients, so I'd have to reserve on that. Um, well, you can adjourn this application right now and you can go and have that discussion. Is that the, the committee's uh, position or, that it would, would need to be limited to just a dental practice? I think we, uh, I think you're uh, Mr. Mr. Wilder. Mr. Wildman, any limit? You're asking me, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Um, so my concern is we're talking about dental office and dental laboratory. And personally, as a member, my own opinion is that I don't have a concern with that uh, change. Uh, but I don't know just how much a medical facility would change my opinion on that, given we don't really know what that might be. And that there's where my concern is. It's, it's not that I'm opposed to the change in permission uh, for the dental, and I just wanna be clear on that. It's just, it's a little open-ended for me, not knowing what the others could be. I appreciate that your client may want the flexibility, um, but at the same time, I'm not sure that uh, we even know what we would be permitting uh, if we were to describe it as a medical facility. Uh, and that certainly is a much broader definition uh, and when we're dealing with permissions, uh, I, I think being so broad may not be the intent of what, what we intended or what we would intend to do uh, when we look at things like this. So from my perspective, my preference would be to uh, limit it to what you're asking for. Um, and uh, with that, if you wish to discuss with your client, uh, just to make sure that there's comfort, um, certainly this committee, I think, would be understanding of that. Could I step it down to later on in the agenda? Will I have that opportunity? Yeah, we can uh, we can put this uh, on at the end of the agenda if you'd like. You yes, can talk please. To your client. Yes, please. Okay. All right. All right, Miss. Well, just to finish the uh, this discussion, Miss Miss McLean, your position on limiting this? Uh, yes, I certainly echo Mr. Uh, Wildman's um, uh, remarks. Um, uh, I'm more inclined to deal with it uh, to a specific uh, medical use to, to uh, understand what the impact would be on the surrounding area rather than to give it to a general um, uh, medical use and, and not know um, what those impacts may be. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Watt, Mr., uh, Mr. Wilder. I concur. Um... Uh, I concur with the uh, with Member McLean and uh, Wildman limited to just the use and uh, not generally to a medical facility. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I'm in agreement with uh, with my fellow panel panel members. So we will step this down, and uh, and you'll be last on the agenda in a little while. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The next item on the agenda is item number eight, 153 Mulva Hill. And this is a minor variance application to permit a front facing attached garage for a new a newly for a new home, new home construction on that street. And the agent, the applicant is Ms. Smith. Is she there? Smith, for the uh, for the record, your your address, please. Nine forty one Maryville Road. Okay. All right, Miss Smith. And uh, Susanna Kesslerova from our office will be making a presentation today. All right. um, Good afternoon. Hi there. My my name is Susanna, and I work for Susan Smith. My last name is Kesslerova, and uh, the address is the same. Nine forty one Maryville Road. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Chair. We oh, yeah. Okay, I almost okay. forgot. I have to do the. I have to do the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies, 
for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. I do, sir. Okay, please proceed. Um, may I ask you? Yes. Thank you. So our property is in uh, Westboro in Ottawa. It is in within the metro neighborhood overlay, but it is not um, in the Westboro overlay and it is not in any uh, heritage overlay. Next slide, please. It is a, a prime location within Westboro close to any amenities. Um, I would also like to mention that um, the owners are present at the hearing today and uh, I feel like it could change the tone of the uh, application if I say that they lived in this area for over 10 years and they lived close by down Byron, close to Parkdale Avenue. And uh, they just love this urban area and that's why they came to us uh, because they want to build their dream home. Uh, next slide, please. This is the property they purchased. It's a single uh, house. Uh, you see the attached, I minus mean, the existing driveway and a detached garage in the rear yard, which is why we're here because uh, we would like to build an attached garage facing the front, which is not complying with the streetscape character. Next slide, please. Uh, the survey on the left side of the slide shows the, the existing dwelling with the detached garage and the existing driveway. The lot exceeds all the requirements um, of the zoning bylaw in terms of the width and the minimum lot area. And on the right side uh, of the slide, you see the proposed site plan showing a two-story dwelling with an attached garage and with a lot of um, soft landscaping, which is a priority for us and for the client. The proposed garage is slightly narrower. It's uh, three meters as opposed to the existing driveway um, is 3.3 meters wide. Uh, we are staying within all the required setbacks, side yard, front yard, rear yard setbacks, and we're also within the maximum height, which is um, eight meters for this R1S zone for this area. And you see the mature tree at the front, which is technically um, on the city's property, but we are committed to preserve this tree. And, and um, next slide, please. Uh, we've discussed the, um, the steps we need to take prior and during construction with our arborist. And um, we would also like to keep the tree in the backyard. Um, next slide, please. Marble Hill Avenue is a pretty small street. It's a short street of only, I believe, 16 houses. And uh, when we did, did the streetscape character, we also expanded the, the study uh, farther to the north and uh, to the south. Yellow color represents carports and attached garages. Uh, there are three of them on Marble Hill. Orange color represents uh, just driveways with front yard parking or side yard parking whether it's uh, legal or not, it's been there for many years. And the red color represents um, the dominant character, which is a detached garage in the rear yard. Next slide, please. As I said, we also looked at the north of Lyman Street, and there is one house with an attached garage facing the front. There are three uh, properties with just um, driveway and front yard parking and four, four properties with a garage in the backyard. Next slide, please. These are the pictures from the street. On the left side, carports and attached garages. On the right, um, garages in the backyard. Next slide, please. More pictures of um, detached garages on the left and uh, the case where there is just a parking is on the right side. Next slide, please. And as I said, we Explored farther, we looked at Wesley Avenue since it's a similar street, it's a similar block um, of not that many houses. And there's been a few more developments or redevelopments in the past. And the result of the, the analysis of the streetscape character, uh, there are 11 or 12 houses with an, an attached front facing garage. Next slide, please. These are pictures from Wesley Avenue. 
join the old houses or new houses with farm facing garages. Next slide, please. So since uh, a detached garage uh, seems to be the dominant character, we looked at that option and it's uh, the picture or the side plan on the left. The red rectangle represents the um, a detached garage and the backyard that can be up to 55 square meters. And as you can see, it um, uh, it occupies majority of the backyard. We would lose that tree in the back. And on the right hand side, um, on the same side plan, you see a long driveway leading to the detached garage. And in this case, it's 70 or 75 feet long of pavement. And on the uh, right side, the proposed side plan, which is the footprint of the proposal would be um, very close. It doesn't change much, but it allows us to keep uh, way more green space and uh, a full functional rear yard. Next slide, please. This is the res result of uh, the permitted um, case, which would be a, a garage in the backyard. And the Google map and the Geo Audible map um, shows the whole picture um, of that scenario where you have a detached structure in the rear and a lot of pavement, a lot of hard landscaping leading, leading to it. Next slide, please. Uh, this is another case from just behind the property on at 153 Lyman Street. Same case, I mean, same uh, different property, same scenario, um, detached structure occupying majority of the backyard. It doesn't allow for any more greenery and a lot of hard surface. Next slide, please. And this is um, one more example of the same case. A lot of pavement and a public structure in the backyard. Next slide. So our response to the character and the history of the area on the street is um, slightly different. It is slope proof, uh, traditional pitch that we repeat at the front of the house and over the front porch, which is another characteristic of the street. Next slide, please. And the, uh, these conceptual renderings are still a little bit um, uh, organic when it comes to materials, but we do feel pretty confident about red brick at the bottom of the house. We haven't decided on the best fit for the street for the second story uh, in terms of color or material for the siding. Uh, we do want to fit the best we can. We want to blend in this neighborhood. Uh, we explore the option of pushing the front, uh, front of the garage wall or the, or the garage door uh, a bit farther from the front property line, but we felt like it the, the overhang that it creates over the garage door just draws more attention to the fact that there is a front facing garage. So we opted for a little bit more um, creative option and uh, we repeated the same page and we would like to hide the garage door behind uh, more greenery, um, perhaps some ivy plants or anything that would do well under these conditions. And we've been talking to our a contractor just to keep this, uh, you know, uh, and to the uh, and to the four tests for this application. Sure. Um, may I ask for the last uh, for the second last slide, please? We do believe that the variance is minor. It's just one variance, and as we've shown above, the impact of the attached garage is smaller than building a detached garage in the backyard. The proposed development is desirable for this property, and we do believe that it, uh, the proposed design is compatible uh, with the scale, rhythm, and character of the, of the street. And um, the proposed variance maintains the general intent and the purpose of the zoning bylaw. Uh, the proposed development represents an opportunity to create a better suited solution for a custom family home in a manner which is consistent with the spirit of the streetscape character studies. And the proposed variance uh, maintains the general intent of the official plan. Thank you. Um, as I said, the, the owners are here and we would like to say a few words or answer any questions if you have. And we note that there are there are two residents on the street in support, but there are we also received 
four letters um, objecting to uh, primarily objecting to the uh, to the front facing garage. Uh, and I know the uh, planning department uh, proposes this application. Ms. Linker, are you there? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff objects to the proposed variance as we are of the opinion that it deviates from the intent of the streetscape character analysis provisions. The streetscape character analysis is an objective count of building elements on the site, and they are intended to encourage development to maintain the character of the existing homes on the street. We believe that the front facing attached garage deviates from the intent of the official plan and zoning by law in this respect and maintaining the existing driveway location will be more in keeping with the streetscape character and will provide better conditions for the retained tree in the front yard. Yes, we also note that the, uh, the forestry department has said that the uh, proposed driveway is gonna be within the critical root zone of the existing tree, or the retained tree in the front yard. Uh, how are you going to address that issue? Uh, we've been talking with our arborist and uh, we believe there is a way around it. Uh, they would you know, put up a fence during construction and we can install permeable pave pavement if it's necessary for preserving the tree. Um, with the services, we would definitely avoid the critical root zone area. And um, yeah. The so forestry department is talking about the driveway needing to be relocated. Not simply just you uh, put uh, orange fencing around a tree to prevent backhoes from digging up the roots. The existing driveway is very close to the location we're proposing. Yeah. If necessary, I believe we can uh, move it over to to the east side of the property. Uh, it would result in not a straight driveway, keeping with all the side yard setbacks. But the driveway could be relocated to, to uh, mitigate the impact on that tree or not? Um, yes, I believe so slightly. Um, but as I said, it, won't, it will result in not a straight driveway leading directly into the garage door. I mean, there would be a turn. How wide is that driveway that you're proposing? Three meters. So Which standard width, permit, standard yeah, width. and it's permitted for this area. But you could uh, you could reduce that driveway width. You are outside. You're not inside a you're not inside a building, so you have to worry about swinging doors. For me. So you don't have to worry about swinging doors hitting walls. So if you went to a two point six meter driveway, would that uh, would that uh, reduce the impact on that tree in the front yard? Uh, well, we can't um, we could reduce it, but we would have to reduce it just from the west side to um, protect the tree a bit more, which would lead to driving into only one side of the garage. Ms. Young, how impactful is that driveway going to be on that tree? Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the TIR didn't uh, raise any major concerns about the driveway uh, location. It says it's about 2.5 meters from the tree. Um, the, the point of our comment was simply that leaving the driveway where it currently exists is better than having the driveway closer to the tree. There, but with the plans as shown there, it sounds like there are ways to mitigate damage. Um, so, I mean, the further away the driveway can be from the tree, the better. So if it can be bent around, then that would be great. Um, but we would just need to see that design. You've heard from the forestry department. Can you modify your site plan to provide a, provide a driveway design that has less impact on that existing mature tree in the front yard? Um, I do believe we can make some adjustments. Okay. And if that's, if that's the case, perhaps what we should do is adjourn this to the next hearing so that we can look at a, at a revised site plan, which uh, shows us that there's going to be 
less impact on the existing mature tree in the front yard. Uh, Andrew, um, your client in agreement, or do we wish to stay with what we have? Um, my only comment is based on what I've you heard. Are, you are, sir. The, you are, oh, sir. I'm I'm Andrew Blocka, uh, owner of uh, 153 Mulva Hill. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, based on what I've heard um, today and from the tree report, is that uh, there does not appear to be uh, any significant concerns. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll defer uh, to your comfort. Um, if you think changes need to be made to the design and we need to come back. Um, again, my understanding from the tree report and from the comments I've heard today uh, is that uh, you know, the mitigations uh, are in place to ensure uh, that there is no damage to the existing tree. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Clay? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I'd prefer to, to deal with the, the uh, merits of the application today um, as presented. And um, should um, the committee decide to approve it, uh, we could perhaps um, indicate that there was an understanding that the driveway was to be reconfigured. But I think uh, um, the, the request before is, is whether or not to permit a front-facing attached garage. Correct. All right. I don't believe there are any any of the neighbors wish to speak to this application. They are not on my list. So you still wish to make a comment, Ms. McLean? You're done. Your hand's still up. <coughs> Ms. Smith? I just wanted to comment about the letters. I believe it was from two neighbors and, and then they issued uh, clarifications after that. Just wanted to say that minor point. Okay. All right. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Hey, uh Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members. Again, it's uh, Andrew Block from 153 Mulvey Hill. Um, I'll be brief. He's ended a great job of covering uh, the important factors of our application. Uh, first, again, uh, like my wife Bridget and I, uh, we've lived in the neighborhood for 10 years, uh, and our two boys, uh, Caleb and Alex, uh, for five and three years, respectively, over 47 Clarendon. Uh, we're intending on building uh, 153 Mulvey Hill to be a forever home for a young family. And we understand what's amazing about this area, and we're 100% invested in keeping it amazing. So our proposed building attached garage, it's not about cars, right? Uh, it's about safe storage for seven bikes, a chariot, a wagon, canoe with a bike trailer, you guys get the idea. Uh, it also provides safe and convenient transition for our young children from these activities into our home. Uh, as Susanna mentioned, if this application isn't supported, our remaining option that does not require variance is to build that large detached garage in the backyard, similar to what we're seeing at 162 Lyman. Uh, I, I really don't believe that this is in the best interest of any members of the community as it's going to result in the loss of the urban green space in the backyard, including a tree. Uh, we've presented an alternative uh, that will protect the green space for urban wildlife and as a safe uh, play area for children. Uh, finally, uh, this design, it meets all zoning requirements and the request to streetscape variance is absolutely minor. Um, attached garages uh, are common in the greater neighborhood beyond Malva Hill. And I believe that our design, which incorporates traditional elements and materials, is more faithful to the streetscape uh, than some other recent modern infills that we've been seeing uh, on Malva Hill. Um, and uh, that's all my comments. So uh, thank you very much for your time uh, and for your consideration of this application. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Any further comments from the applicant's agents? Any comments, com further comments or questions from the members of the committee? Do we wish to? Uh, Make a decision right now or reserve, Mr. Wilder. Mm. Uh. Can't hear you. I um I would prefer to uh, reserve. I'm not sure how the other um, members feel. So so would I. Quite frankly, we just need to discuss this a little further. I think what we'll do, thank, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your excellent input. Uh, what we're going to do is observe on this application, and you'll receive our notice of decision in 10 days. Thank you very much. Thank you.
the uh, next application before us is item number nine on the agenda, 113 Lower Charlotte Street. This is a minor variance application to permit reductions to lot area percentage of windows, soft landscaping, and facade setback for the conversion of the existing dwelling into a triplex. And the agent for this is Elena Levies, I believe is one of the owners. Yes, hi, Mr. Chair. So your uh, your address for the uh, for the record, please. It is uh, 113 Lower Charlotte Street. Oh, you're in the building. I know. <laughs> you want my home address? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, before we be begin, we'll, we'll have to do the, uh, the oath and solemn declaration. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing? and you're clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. I do. Okay. And before we start, the committee is curious exactly what is that dwelling right now? Duplex, triplex, fourplex? How many, yep. how many housing units are in there? So it has three units currently. So it's currently a triplex. Um, that's the way it was when we bought it in March of this year. Okay. And uh, is that a legal triplex? It is not, which is why we are here today. Um, originally, we submitted a permit just to uh, do cosmetic changes inside. We want to make some plumbing changes to put in some new kitchen and bathrooms. And at that time, we were informed it had never received a permit for a legal triplex. And so um, we do have some variances that prevent us from uh, getting that completed. And that's why we're here today. Yeah. Um, our so understanding that the variances are all basically existing conditions. Yes. So as you can see, this is a historical building that's been on the property. You know, it's been a hundred year old building. It's been operating as a triplex for around 50 years. We're not making any changes to the structure, no changes outside. We literally just want to do some cosmetic changes inside with new kitchens and baths. Any plan to increase the amount of soft landscaping on the site? You seem to have a lot of asphalt. Yeah, so um, we tried, like we looked at it with our designer. Um, if you look at the front of the property and the photos that I tried to provide, um, at the front, there is like a significant amount of greenery. We have two very mature trees. We recently put in, you know, some gardens in the front and um, there's a big side yard as well. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if you can maybe flip to the photo of the property that I provided in the report. There's, I don't know who's driving the presentation, but um, sorry. So there is quite a bit of green space, but it's, it's on the front and the side of the building. Um, and then at the back is, is paving, but we had wanted to keep that for the sole reason that it is um, where the shed is, where tenants will have access to um, garbage and recycling. And it also is on the one side where there's paving, it's where the fire escape is. So all our egress exits go out to that fire escape. And okay. so we would wanna keep snow removal and stuff below that fire escape in the winter time. So we were concerned about reducing like getting rid of that hard landscaping and the impact on like just garbage recycling and definitely the fire escape okay understood um from the public notice um you're you're aware that variant c needs to be amended to read uh not 256.49 but 258.26 square meters yes um the coordinator did email me and i said yes that was fine to make that change okay. no problem Okay. So, regarding the uh, regarding the four tests, the planning act that we have to use to evaluate your application. Yes. Please. So, um, looking at this property in regards to the rest of the the neighborhood and understanding the streetscape, if you look at the soft landscaping to start with, I feel that we are in keeping with other properties within the neighborhood that are operating as multi-unit properties and or like single 
residences with triplexes within them. So I, I feel like it's in keeping with what's expected in that neighborhood for that size of a, a rental unit. In terms of the, the setback, it would be the same. If you look at um, this neighborhood, it's very mature. It's in a, in a dense neighborhood. Um, and basically most of, the, uh, most of the soft landscaping looks the same. In terms of, um, uh, sorry, what's the other one? Give me one second. I'm just gonna look at my notes here. So that's soft landscaping. And then, sorry, scrolling through. Then in terms of the front facade, again, this is a historical building, which is quite beautiful and, uh, and is in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. And um, we, we really would uh, not want to make any changes to the front facade or the overall construction of the building. So we didn't feel like this was something that could really be, be changed at this time. And it was minor. Okay. Um, and then uh, in regards to, uh, sorry, the overall lot size, we felt that um, we were not far off from the lot size expected for a triplex. And so it was minor. And we did feel that, you know, the intent is that it should be in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood, et cetera. And, and we did feel that it is in keeping with other um, units uh, like that in the neighborhood as well um, and would cause no detriment. Okay. And then in terms of the reduced window percentage. So again, it's, it's a beautiful home and um, we, you know, replacing all the windows and enlarging everything would, I think, like destroy the character of this beautiful building. And um, again, it's in keeping with the rest of the neighborhood. There are definitely, you know, many multi-unit properties in this neighborhood that have the same look and the same feel. And in addition to that, I did provide some pictures in the report you know, in the spirit of you need to have windows because as a tenant, you it should be, you know, you should have a sufficient light, et cetera, in each of those units. And if you look at those units on their own merit, there's lots of windows, they're, they're really beautiful. There's lots of light coming in. So, you know, I don't feel that there's any, you know, detriment to a tenant living in one of those units by not enlarging the windows. But I do feel that there would be a huge detriment because it would, really changed the whole look of the, of the building. And it would be, it would look quite odd to suddenly insert a whole bunch of large windows. And in some cases, like, I don't even think we, we would be able to based on the existing structure. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. <laughs> I don't know if that helps. Oh, it does. Okay. Uh, I think you've answered the committee's questions. Any, any questions or comments from the members of the committee? Um, regarding variances, variances A, D, and E, we approve this. Uh, we're going to tie the approval of these variances to the life of the building. Awesome! Just Thank you so something, much. It's something we do on a on a on a fairly regular basis, especially with, with <clears throat> older existing homes and 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 variances that are existing conditions. Yes, Thank you so much. Okay, so. Um, all right, Mr. Mr. Wilder, no comments. Mr. Wildman, no comments. All right. So regarding the uh, this application for variance for uh, 113 Lower Charlotte Street, all in favor of the application. Your application is approved. Good luck with your project. Now you have a legal triplex. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. You really, don't, you really don't want the city coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to do all the right things. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Now, let me think here. The next item I'll deal with on the agenda is item number 10, 
681 tweets, Mayor. And the agent for this uh, this application is Nadia Desanti. This is a minor rights application to permit increased height and rear yard setbacks for the construction of a slab on grade two story coach house in the rear. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. My name is Nadia Desanti. I'm a practice lead with WSP. And um, if I could. Uh, Your address for the, for the record, please. Oh, pardon me. It's 2611 Queensview Drive, Suite okay. 300. Okay. All right. This is a. Uh, this is a returning application. As you know, we, uh, we you, uh, dismissed your application on the 4th of May of this year. Yes, so, uh, so first of all, Mr. Chair, I wish to uh, swear about the sign posting. Yep. yep, I was about to get to that. Okay. You solemnly swear, affirm, swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and are clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. I swear. Okay. And I would um, welcome the opportunity to pre present our presentation. And I am joined today by Brian Sim, who is with the Ottawa General Contractors and the landowners, Stephanie and Devin are also here. Um, okay. So if I can have the floor for five minutes, uh, part of this presentation will be shared yep. by Brian and I, please. Yep. Thank you. So um, thank you for um, this, uh, this opportunity. And um, as I mentioned, I would like to run through this presentation. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So this site is located within the Westboro neighborhood on the east side of Tweedsmere Avenue. The, uh, it's an existing two-story detached dwelling and a two-story detached garage. There are detached dwellings to the north and south with some semi-detached dwellings uh, to the east of the property and a low rise uh, apartment building is located to the west of the site. Next slide, please. These photos were taken by myself last Wednesday at around two o'clock. Um, so this is a photo of the uh, existing house uh, with the Committee of Adjustment sign, and there um, is a driveway on the uh, north side of the property, so to the left, as well as um, to the um, south of the property or on the right-hand side uh, of the photo. Next slide, please. The um, existing detached garage is a two-story, and it is at the uh, rear of the property. Um, it has a building height of 4.9 meters, Right now, this uh, detached garage is mainly used for uh, accessory storage. Um, it's not occupied, no human occupation. Um, and there are structural issues that make this structure uh, um, um, somewhat unsafe. So you can see on the next slide, a photo of this existing detached um, garage. I will note um, that at the time we made our application and submission, the proposed site plan showed um, a row of hedge, uh, a hedge uh, along the property line. Those hedges have been removed and uh, the fence is under construction, which you can see in this photo and you'll see it even further. Uh, next slide, please. This shows the existing garage um, and the encroachment. And I have a photo that you will see that uh, right now the existing detached garage encroaches the uh, rear property line of 0.77 meters. And so the proposed development of the coach house would actually rectify that situation um, and uh, not, in, um, not have any kind of encroachment. Um, and the actually the proposed rear yard setback, which I will get to as well, is more than what the zoning bylaw requires. Next slide, please. So this photo shows the 0.77 meters of encroachment of the existing garage into the neighbor's property. So that is the Dover Court Housing Corpora Corporation. And so the um, this uh, proposed development would rectify that. I also want to. Um, note that this 
property has a much longer lot depth than the um, adjacent properties to the north and to the south. So it has a longer uh, lot depth than the uh, existing uh, sites and the fence is under construction. Next slide, please. I'm gonna turn it over to Brian to um, just review the original design that you saw back in May with our proposed um, design. And then I will get uh, back and speak to the Meyer variance test. Brian, you'll have to unmute yourself. Unmute, thanks Nadia, appreciate that. Um, so uh, the original, on the left hand side, revised on a couple of the key points here. That's the building height. That's a very simple plan for us. So we've taken that down the sides, less impact on the neighboring properties. Um, so, not too far over the garage, scale that again. And then also on the far side, we've, we've tucked it in. So, the height of the sec or the space of the second story is dramatically decreased, as well as the height was taken down as well, introducing a uh, very limited attic space and slope ceiling. Um, basically taking that to as low as, as you know, livable, um, as, as livable as possible in the second story, and then taking that footprint in to just really uh, decrease the impact on the neighboring properties uh, as far as um, shading or what have And the... Uh, uh, next slide, please. You've removed the... Uh, you no longer have a basement pr pr proposed for this, Coach House? You're there was no basement in the original. Um, no basement yes. in the original or the proposed. Okay, and the gross floor area of this coach house would be how much? 80 square meters. We're just under footprint. 80 square meters, Mr. Um, Chair. You're looking for the footprint, sorry, Mr. Chair? I said the gross floor area, not the footprint. Okay, this can be one second there. We're just going to be doing, we have the footprint, we're just going to do a quick calculation. We're aware of the footprint. I'd like to know what the gross floor area is. Okay, um, just give me one second here. My colleague is just calculation for me 940 including the garage 940 including the garage 940 square feet including the garage that means square meters so in square meters 80 oh. is that okay with square footage or would you like square meters as well square meters are better we uh, we have been metric in this country since 1975 Right. 102 square meters. 102 square meters, including the garage. Yeah. The average two bedroom apartment in this country is 79 square meters. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. With the garages, there's a garage there as well. Okay. Okay, uh, Nadia, would you like me to keep going? Yes, um, please. Okay, um, so the original design, um, again, two-story with the garage, existing garage be demolished, replaced uh, by the two-story. I think we are uh, almost good for the next slide, really just this one's kind of referencing that the driveway will be maintained, the access straight through. Um, um, so next slide, please. Um, this is an important one to show our our previous application for Sir New, we've tucked it back off of the property line uh, on the rear, um, and then also, of course, taken the building height down uh, fairly substantially as a whole off the property lines as well. Uh, and this view is just showing how much um, that we just wanted to take back. And really, that's just to lessen any sort of impact on the neighboring units. And we have such a big lot that uh, we were able to do so um, and not really impact the, the initial, um, the original lot. Next slide, please. All right, here is a table um, with some of the changes here from the original design. So you can see we've taken down a meter of the building height from the original. All right, we're trying to get this thing as low as possible. Um, it was above the entire second story before, and now we have the center of the building um, taking up roughly 60% of the footprint there. So we're taking that down quite a bit as far as square footage of that second story. Um, second story above the garage. Yes, the rear setback was increased by one meter as well. Next slide, please. Thanks, Brian. So if I may, um, I will go through the, the requested minor variances, Mr. Chair. Certainly. 
So the first um, variance is to permit a maximum building height of a coach house of 5.8 meters. Now the zoning bylaw permits a maximum coach house height of 3.6 meters, but I'd like to draw the committee's attention as per our planning rationale policy 3.1.1 um, has some subsections that um, provide criteria for additional height uh, for a two-story garage, uh, sorry, a two-story coach house uh, in the urban area. And so we have met all of those criteria in the city's existing official plan, which are outlined in our planning rationale. Um, the, um, so the proposed uh, increase in height is minor given that the existing two-story detached garage is right now at 4.9 meters. So we're asking for a building height of less than one meters to the existing um, to the existing garage. Um, pardon me, next slide, please. Thank you. And the second and final variance that we're seeking is to permit a maximum rear yard setback. So the um, zoning bylaw requires a maximum one meter rear yard setback. We're actually asking to increase that maximum to two meters. So actually providing more um, that um, we are increasing. One of the things I want to address as well, Mr. Chair, members of committee, is that through this process, we have um, met with uh, all of the neighbors. Um, there was a site tour that uh, Brian conducted on the property in July, um, and um, all the neighbors um, were had no concerns. And so, um, and our client, Stephanie, has also emailed the um, uh, the community association president twice didn't hear any concerns. So I wanted to ensure that the committee knew um, it was indicated in our planning rationale, the public consultation process that was undertaken since the submission of the application. There was also additional outreach, as I mentioned by Stephanie to the president of the community association and there were no concerns raised. The next few slides are on the architectural elevations I'm cognizant of time. So I'd like to just move on to the four tests, please. Next slide. One more. Thank you. So the first tests are the minor uh, variances. Um, are the variances minor? So the increase in height relatively uh, is minor compared to the existing garage, as I mentioned. Um, the effect on the existing character of the area and streetscape of the of Tweedsmere would be minor because the existing garage would be replaced with a structure of similar footprint. The existing garage has a building footprint of um, 60 square meters. Um, and the reason for the building uh, footprint for the coach house is to allow sufficient living and kitchen area on the first floor and a bedroom on the second story. The minor variance is, uh, is also minor um, given that um, the official plan has policies to increase the height of a coach house in urban areas. And we've met all of those criteria. Privacy of the abutting properties is not affected because no windows are proposed for the size of the coach house along the Northern and Eastern property lines. And as I mentioned, the, um, uh, the hedge is, uh, is down and there is a fence uh, that is being constructed. The second test are the variance is desirable for the appropriate development or use of the property. Again, um, the proposed coach house would actually rectify an existing uh, encroachment. So the proposed uh, coach house would not encroach uh, the properties um, to the rear, to the east, and would actually be uh, providing more space between the proposed coach house building from what exists today. The coach house would utilize the existing driveway and um, the proposed two-story coach house is compatible with the adjacent two-story developments that currently exist to the north and the east. Next slide, please. The third test, do the variances maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? So the site is zoned residential through density, subzone R, which permits, um, uh, permits detached dwellings and uh, coach house is a permitted use. Uh, the proposed variance maintains the general intent and purpose of the R3 zone by facilitating the development of other residential uses that would provide additional housing choices within the R3 zoned area. And um, the uh, requirements for the coach house um, um, 
all of the provisions are being met with the exception for building height. Again, the maximum rear yard setback is a decision that the owners have made to create more space between uh, their neighbors. So that's, um, that's something that I wanna make sure the committee um, is aware of. Therefore, the, the variance is, uh, is minor and would not result in negative impacts on the adjacent property, properties. And finally, the fourth test on the next slide, please. Do the variances maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan? As I mentioned, um, the site is designated general urban area in the current official plan. It um, allows for residential uses and, um, and development that is compatible. The proposed minor variances does not take away from the character of the neighborhood. The proposed development of the coach house um, would result in residential uh, intensification redevelopment in the general urban area that is permitted. And the criteria for coach house development set out in the current official plan has been satisfied, including the requirements for a minor variance application for a two-story coach house to be considered. Proposed variance maintains the intent of the new official plan. So the site is in the inner urban transect um, and in the neighborhood designation. The proposed development contributes to the creation of new housing types while maintaining the low-rise built form of the area. And policy 4.2.0 one sub three of the new official plan, which has been adopted by council, but not yet approved by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, recognizes accessory dwelling units, including couch, coach houses, as key components of the affordable housing network. That concludes our presentation. We're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. McLean, you had a question or comment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, mean, I have some observations I want to make, and then uh, and then I'll just ask you to address them. Um, so I think what would have been helpful if we had seen the proposed coach house in context with the existing dwelling on the site, just to ensure um, how it's secondary or if it's secondary to the principal to the principal dwelling. I just want confirmation on what the uh, the current dwelling is, is used, is it a single or is it multiple units? And then what I'm hearing is that the um, new coach house is, it's higher um, than the existing two-story garage um, and that the uh, floor area is, is uh, more than the two-story um, garage and more than the original proposed coach house. Um, and then I guess um, the parking is the parking, the new garage for the existing uh, dwelling, or is it for the coach house? And if it's for the coach house, where's the parking for the existing dwelling? So I'll just, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McLean. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I might, could you just repeat, we've got the proposed coach house in context. So with that, um, through you, Mr. Chair. So um, the in our planning rationale on page six, there is figure six, which shows the um, proposed site plan, as well on page seven, figure seven is the rendering of the proposed coach house. You can see um, it is labeled where the existing single detached dwelling is located. Um, so those have been provided um, in our planning rationale to show the context of the proposed coach house in a relation to um, the existing dwelling. And then as well, figure three on page four of our planning rationale shows the rear yard of the site. Uh, and in the red shading shows where that um, existing garage encroaches onto the neighboring property. So I just wanted to flag that. Um, the, uh, it is a single detached um, house. It is uh, residential, in, uh, residential na in nature. So there is, um, our, our clients are, are here. They, they live in the house. Um, and um, Stephanie, I don't, thank you. Stephanie, if you wanted to maybe address that question. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's as uh, uh, the house is as lived. I live here with, uh, you know, my husband, my children, and my parents. Three. Thank you, Stephanie. Three, Mr. Chair. Sorry, Ms. McLean. I think I missed one other. Oh, the building footprint was your question. I think. 
Um, it, yeah, it was it had also the parking, the park, the new parking garages for which which building, and then um, if it's for the coach house, where's the parking for the existing house? Yes. So um, thank you, three, Mr. Chair, regarding the parking, and then um, I will get to um, Brian for the building footprint. Um, and perhaps the building footprint could be provided uh, without the garage component. So the new parking garage for the coach house is for the coach house. There is a long driveway that goes uh, through it. Right now, there is a, the driveway goes, um, is wider in the front. And um, Emily, maybe if you can pull up the presentation, it is shown on slide three, please where I have the site photos. Uh, slide three. At near the beginning of the presentation. Thank you. So um, through you, Mr. Chair. So there is a parking space right now. So that silver car, so I'm looking at the top left photo. Um, so there is a parking space right now that exists today. And then the driveway, um, uh, is to the west of that, uh, to the north rather, to the left of the photo. So that driveway um, would be extended to go right into the garage of the proposed coach house. So is that, is that, is that parking space in front of the existing dwelling legal? Looks like um, front yard parking to me. So through you, Mr. Chair, the the owners have lived in this house for 11 years and this is how it was that's um, not the answer that's not the no answer i realize that for. um it hasn't been raised it. it wasn't raised as a concern by city planning staff so um mm -hmm. well yeah that's good. usually yeah, it's an, it is an existing condition, but just for the parking, Ms. McLean, this silver car would provide access. That would be the parking space for the existing home. And then the driveway would be extended to the rear. And then in that lower yeah. photograph, is there parking on the right-hand side? I see a white vehicle. So is this, is this a house have two driveways on each side, one on each side? Yes, the property has two driveways. So um, the, there's like an in-law suite on to the to the right uh it's a single detached but the as stephanie mentioned um there are parents who live there so their access is on the uh the southern driveway where the white vehicle is so that would remain there's no proposed change to that driveway or to that access or to that portion of the property okay thank you and brian if i could uh, turn it over to you to answer the um <clears throat> Question on the building footprint, please. Absolutely, yeah. And just to touch on the parking, I'm not. I believe that um, that all those where the two cars are on the left, all of that parking is for. It's not shared with the other unit. They have their own parking, I believe. So but there is a. It's double wide, so you'd be able to to easily in and out the coach um, if there was another car there. Um, it's quite wide, but we can go on the footprint as well. Our existing application. We are, you know, permitted for the 80 square meters. Our existing application was 72 square meters. Now we're up to 80. Um, 18 square meters of that is the garage. Um, so the, um, you know, the footprint of livable space there would be that 80 less 18 um, of actual livable uh, footprint. I think it's important to note that, um, you know, what, what, what portion of that the garage is taking up. Um, and of course, within the uh, within the bylaw, um, you know, we've we've. We're looking at coach home with the garage. Of course, it's pretty gray on there saying, hey, applications with a garage in the second story, um, you know, will be looked at through a minor variance. So that's, uh, you know, the, the garage is playing, a, is playing a part in that as well in order to achieve um, the smallest second story in, uh, that we can in both height and mass. And through you, you Mr. Chair, I just want to note the photo with um, the parking, that red vehicle is mine. So I parked on the site when I, uh, so uh, on the top left, that red vehicle is my vehicle. So that's um, not the owner. So um, just to clarify that. 
and also, um, as Brian mentioned, the maximum building footprint of a coach house permitted in the zoning bylaw is 80 square meters. So we are in keeping with that. We are not seeking a variance for a maximum building footprint. Thank you. Is Mr. Hamilton still with us? Yes, Mr. Chair. Chair. Um, that's an illegal front yard parking space in front of 681 Tweedsmere Avenue. It does appear so uh, in a so review. So how, do, how does that impact this application? It doesn't necessarily impact the variances as requested from my perspective. Uh, the two driveway widths, the one on the, I guess, the northern portion of the property and the one on the yeah. southern, if we look at them as individual driveways would be permitted. They do appear to be legal non-conforming. Um, in terms of parking, it appears that the dwelling, principal dwelling unit has parking on the right-hand side of the dwelling. And then there's a, a driveway that extends to the coach house in the rear on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. um, the double wide portion that you referenced as front yard parking, it appears that that portion has always been there in some form since about, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the early 2000s, uh, around 2001 or 2002. And then at some point in 2014, it was extended to the right of way to create a double wide driveway. Um, oh, so the, the extension would not be permitted. So what we're dealing with on this site, therefore, is illegal front yard parking. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. All right. Like, like I said, <clears throat> we can deal with these, these these issues separately. Understanding that there's a there's a bylaw violation uh, associated with this property, apparent bylaw violation, or do we <clears throat> adjourn this and get this resolved? So, oh, so Mr. Chair, if if um, I mean we would prefer to. Um, you know, we, our clients, I'm sure, although I haven't uh, spoken to them about this illegal front yard parking space, I think, um, you know, that can be handled. I think we would like, um, if there's any advice on, uh, on how to address that as soon as, and as quickly as possible, um, we're happy to, uh, to hear that advice. We could make approval of this conditional on the, uh, on the resolution of the illegal front yard parking on, on site. That would be acceptable. Mr. Chair. Mr. Wildman, comment? Question for Mr. Hamilton. Uh, you said uh, that the, the widening is, a, is an issue. Is it an issue under the zoning bylaw only, or is it an issue under the private approach bylaw as well? Or is it one or the other? Through you, Mr. Chair, I suspect it could be through both. There are provisions in both bylaws that could cause issues with non-compliance. If I'm just thinking about the private approach bylaw right now, high level, I don't think there's necessarily an issue with the extension portion that's created front yard parking. Um, the large provisions are that there's no more than 50% of the lot frontage that's dedicated to right-of-way connections. Um, that's not the case in this instance. It would likely just be a zoning bylaw issue. Okay. Um, Chair, assuming, if committee were to vote in favor of this application, um, I'm comfortable with uh, such a condition as was mentioned. Um, so yeah. that's my view. Thank you. Okay. All right. Ms. McLean. Um, I think Mr. Chair, maybe we should just um, make a decision on the variances that are before us and uh, leave the front yard parking um, uh, to another venue because um, it's difficult to put conditions on a minor variance application and uh, we're dealing solely with the coach house, I think, at this time. Well, however, Vincent versus the Gaspers 2005 says we can approve, we can apply conditions that reasonably relate to a variance. So anyway, thank you, Ms. McLean. I think what we'll do, uh, if, if that's it for the, for the presentations, thank you very much. Um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna reserve on this application and you'll receive our, our decision, our notice of decision in 10 days. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, sorry, may, um, 
just for clarification, I, I just want to make sure that um, uh, that the committee members are um, aware that if um, as having a condition to the uh, decision for the minor variances would be acceptable. Um, I saw Stephanie's head nod, so I'm since we're not in person, I just want to make sure that uh, yep. that um, approach would be. Yep. Uh, favorable to our client and we were hoping for an oral decision today um, um, our client is leaving for vacation for two weeks at the time when your the decision would be released so is there an opportunity to have an oral decision today i'd like to discuss this further with the members of the committee so we're going to reserve okay okay thank you all right okay so we're going to reserve this on this application and you'll receive your, your the notice of decision in 10 days. Mr. Thank Chair, you. could I just ask for one clarification? Um, it was my understanding perhaps uh, that the coach house is, is not permitted if there's another secondary dwelling unit in the existing house. Am I wrong there, Mr. Hamilton? Or Through you, Mr. Chair, I believe you are correct. I might need a moment to verify. So, Ms. Oh. Desante, is that in-law suite? <laughs> How is that it's not, it, So, um, it's it's a living space. Um, so, maybe, Stephanie, if you wanted to explain that a little bit further, but... Um, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a separate suite. Like, it's not a separate, like, the house is all connected. Like, it's not like it's completely cut off or separated. They just do have their own entrance to go into the side, but the house is... Yeah like you know all open, open. And I can go to their side and it's just it is just one dwelling but it just gives my parents like to have sort of their own space but it's not there's no secondary dwelling in the house right. or unit so it's a single detached with two families living in it um essentially um through you Mr. Chair thank you all right Bye. okay all right then, then uh, we'll uh, you'll like I said you'll get a notice of our decision in ten days. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, next application before us today are items number eleven and twelve, six seventy four and six seventy six De Eglise Street. Uh, this was adjourned. Uh, because the questions re hydro and and, uh, and setbacks. Uh, the agent for this application is Mr. Robinson. Mr. Good Robinson, afternoon, Chairman. We don't have to do the uh, the oath of solemn declaration because we've already done it. Um, so um, I note that um, you know, just to make sure that you you are aware of this correspondence from the right away people at Hydro Ottawa is not requiring a 1.5 meter setback from the hydro poles to the driveway. And the 0.5 meter clearance outlined in Hydro's comment is the correct requirement. That is correct. After the last meeting, I sought, uh, went through a couple of people at the, um, the right of way group and uh, secured that uh, confirmation, which aligned itself with the setback that Hydro Ottawa had provided in the comments that were before you two weeks ago. Okay. And then the revised uh, re report from the depart planning department uh, removing the duplicate duplicated condition five and under additional comments, number two is revised to remove the 1.5 meter setback to 0.5 meters. That is correct. Okay. So is there anything else to add to what we discussed several weeks ago? Um, just a reconfirmation that the setback that we are showing um, for the driveway at the rear to the northerly lot is in excess of 0.5 of a meter. It's actually 0.72 okay. of a meter. Um, there, um, there were comments about uh, provided by the members of the public about uh, a tree that is at the rear, which would not be impacted. That is a city tree, and we're not uh, impacting that servicing for these two triplex units would come in off the street, uh, the, the street with the municipal address. On the east side, it would come in through uh, Delivlees. Yeah. The requirements in, in the zoning bylaw are for actually for no parking, and we're providing one parking space uh, per uh, unit. Yeah. 
And you've seen the correspondence from the neighbor who was on the speaker's list but couldn't make it this afternoon talking about the uh, negative externality of parking in the neighborhood caused by your development. Yes, I just received uh, those comments uh, middle of this morning. Um, any response to the uh, to that neighbor? The uh, as indicated, the bylaw does not uh, throughout this area and large areas of the city. Uh, when you have up to 12 units, uh, you do not have to provide any parking. Um, the uh, the owners of the building are going to uh, make it quite abundantly clear to uh, tenants that there is only one parking space per unit. So when the building is occupied and somebody has already uh, secured that parking space, mm -hmm. um, no new people can, they can't bring their own cars to the uh, the facility because there is no dedicated parking space for them. All right. Okay. All right. Any, uh, any further comments, questions from the members of the committee regarding this, this application that we adjourned several weeks ago? Everyone's happy with the, uh, with hydro's confirmation of setback requirements. Mr. Wildman, you're good with that? Okay. All right. So to the four tests, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. The four tests of the uh, of a minor variance under the Planning Act are they, they to maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan, general intent and purpose of the zoning by bylaw, be desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land building or structure and be minor in nature. In terms of being uh, maintaining the general intent and purpose of the official plan, in the full force and effect official plan, the property is in a general urban area designation which permits a range of housing types. Section 3.6.1 policy five supports intensification in this designation where it complements the scale of development and the planned function of the area. The neighborhood has other examples of triplex buildings and sixplex buildings. And the proposed development is of a scale that maintains the low rise pattern of the neighborhood. In the new official plan, the property is in an inner urban transect official plan designation Policies within that transect indicate that developments are encouraged to move towards an urban built form pattern. As a small scale intensification on each of the lots of this overall property for a triplex on each, the proposal is in conformity with the official plan designation for the lands and maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan, which allows for a variety of ground oriented multiple housing forms. It maintains the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, the R4UA zone permits triplex units and there are variances requested for a 2.4% reduction in lot area, approximately seven square meters per lot and a 4% reduction in lot width, uh, 0.4 meters approximately, which are quite small reductions and reflect the existing shape and size of the lot. All other zoning provisions are met, including building heights, setbacks, softscaping requirements and permitted projections. Desirable for the appropriate development and use of the land, it is proposed at a scale in keeping with the overall neighborhood, which has a number of triplex and sixplex units on large on, in the area. It contains a large area of R4 zone lands, the neighborhood does, which permits this type of residential intensification. It has been designed to only require variances based on the current shape and size of the lot, and those variances are quite small in nature. The proposal is in general conformity with the existing pattern of development and future pa patterns of development based on the zoning and official plan policies minor in nature. The variances being requested are quite small and minor in nature and all other performance standards have been met. The requested variances reflect the shape and size of the lot. And I would indicate as well that the planning department had no concerns with this application. Yes, we note that. Thank you. Um, you're aware of the conditions, we'll just go over them for the benefit of everybody. Uh, cash and loop parkland, a tree planting plan needs to be provided. Yep. Development agreement or letter of undertaking to prepare and implement the tree planting plan and securities of $400 per tree for a period of one year. Yes. Existing dwelling removed and services capped, standard stuff. Existing structure straddling the proposed service line has been demolished. Confirmation of that. And drainage and draining plan, drainage and breeding and drainage plan, again, a standard condition. And a development agreement for asphalt overlays. Um, just a, a couple of notes. Um, obviously, items four and five have now been merged together into one as there was yeah. a duplication. Yeah. So then the numbering yes. scheme, the numbering scheme is reduced yeah. by one. So yeah. the, fi the final condition, which is listed as eight, but really should be seven. Um, I was wondering if there could be something if we, um, it talks about an asphalt overlay. 
on uh, Morgan Street or Dillick Lees. My, my understanding is it would be on Dillick Lees because that's where the servicing connections would come. And there is a, uh, in the additional comments, um, it talks about, I think it's uh, additional comment 12, says that the asphalt overlay would be required if three or more road cuts would be required. If it's going to be two lots, my understanding is it would be two um, road cuts. So I was wondering if that could be put into that condition seven somehow. It, it, it might not be needed is what I'm referring to. But if we, and we leave it there and uh, it's not required, then it becomes moot. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions or comments from the members of the, of the committee regarding this application? All right, well, we've had confirmation of hydro that setbacks are okay. Uh, are we prepared to vote? All in favor of the application as presented. Applications approved. Good luck with your project, Mr. Robinson. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat> we'll now move to items 13 and 14 on the, uh, on the agenda. 424 Avondale. And this is uh, Ms. Daoul, I believe, is the uh, is the applicant's agent, Ms. Daoul. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Your address for the record, please. 43 Eccles Street, Unit C, Ottawa. Okay. Uh, you're aware that the, that the planning department has some concerns with this application. So you can definitely uh, address that. Uh, and we do have a question Quite frankly, before we oh, I better do the uh, solemn oath or declaration. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entire of that time? I affirm. All right. Um, the bell easement that was uh, that is that is being requested. Does that bell easement impact the design? Of the uh, of the of the new homes, or does the does the applicant's objection to the bell easement simply an objection? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, the bell easement uh, does not impact the actual design of the homes. It's at the most uh, southerly lot line and runs the entire length uh, from east to west across the rear of the property. Um, the owner's initial concerns with the easement was simply due to the fact that we didn't know exactly what that easement would entail, whether that would put restrictions on required plantings in the rear. He's intending to plant uh, cedar shrubbery, and it also creates encumbrances, of course, on the uh, entirety of the rear of the property. Um, however, through discussions with his legal representation, uh, the owner is agreeing to the condition as proposed by Bell, and they will have further other discussions following um, the committee's decision regarding those easements and the what they exactly will entail. So there's no, no longer an objection to the easement. That's correct, yes. Okay. So um, just uh, briefly through the uh, through the application please and concentrate on the uh, on the four tests if you would please. Absolutely. So um, this application is for proposed consent and minor variances to facilitate uh, the development of two single detached dwellings at 424 Avondale Avenue. This site is directly across from the intersection, the T intersection of Cole Avenue. Um, next slide and I'll just skip that slide as well. Um, the proposed, yes, yeah, sorry, thank you. Uh, so this site presently contains a single detached dwelling with a detached garage and a driveway along the west side of the property. Um, this neighborhood is characterized primarily by single detached dwellings as well as semi-detached dwellings uh, in a variety of ages of construction, many of which have recently been developed or approved and uh, many which are existing older homes and um, a quite uh, high number of the properties contain uh, front-facing attached garages, including the properties to both the immediate east and west of the property. Um, to the east of the property is a single detached dwelling with paired driveways in the center of the property, each of which feature front-facing attached garages. Next slide, please. 
So the proposal again is to sever the property into two parcels uh, with parts one being West parcel A, the severed, parts two being uh, parcel B and facilitating the construction of two new singles with one dwelling unit on each lot. Each lot will require an 8.5 meter um, lot width, which requires a reduction to the um, zoning requirement of 10 meters. And actually this is a good point in time to just uh, note that there was a correction requested to the notice. Yeah, there, um, there is A and E to uh, that's 8, correct. 8.85 from 8.5. That's correct, yep. So just noted for the for the notice. And, the, and your zoning descriptions changed as well to uh, R4UA bracket 2686 on bracket H bracket 8.5 on bracket. That's correct. Okay. Um, so while there is a requested lot width reduction, uh, the lot area proposed for the site does exceed the zoning requirements of 300 meters squared with 307.7 meters squared proposed. Um, the lot shapes and dimensions are appropriate and compatible with the surrounding character of the neighborhood, providing much, uh, added density that's appropriate um, and a form of gentle intensification to the urban area and meet the criteria under section 5124 of the Planning Act. And I apologize, there is a typo on the uh, slide. Uh, next slide, please. In addition to the required reduced lot width variance, um, the following variances are also required, which are the same for each development, being a reduced interior side yard setback of 1.2 meters along both the east and west lot lines, whereas one and a half meters is required, as well as a permitted uh, front-facing attached garage, whereas that is not presently uh, permitted by the results of the streetscape character analysis. Okay. Next slide, please. A fourth variance is required to permit an increase in building height of 9.04 meters, whereas 8.5 meters is required. Um, I would like to reiterate that this is a very technical request. Um, there's been a significant amount of due diligence that has been undertaken with the owner, architect, um, city engineers, as well as um, the consulting engineer to confirm uh, the existing grading situation and how to rectify that through the proposed development. Uh, so this lot is part of, and this was described in, at length in the cover letter as well, of course, um, but this lot was part of the formal, former Cole Avenue, which was closed by a judge's order and then redeveloped. And it appears that when redeveloped, the grading was never changed and brought up to an appropriate standard, which is compatible with the adjacent properties um, all surrounding it from all sides. So because of that grading situation, there's potential issues for flooding and water management on site. And so the grade does need to be raised um, to reflect what's something that's much more appropriate for the surrounding community before any form of development can be undertaken on the property. Um, so the proposed grade, uh, the proposed grade raise and the proposed height request increase match exactly at 0 0.54 meters. And so once considered from the proposed new grade, which would be actually the corrected grade and more appropriate for the site, the dwelling actually would still meet the required zoning if the existing average grade would be considered um, from a more reasonable perspective um, from the outset. So I'll go into the four tests in the next slide, please. So the requested reduction in lot width is minor in this case. The proposed lot area again exceeds zoning requirements and this neighborhood does contain a variety of lot fabrics and sizes in a mix of singles and semis. The existing lot width would permit semis townhouses or a six unit apartment development as of right. Uh, however, given the surrounding context, the ground orient development in the format of two singles is much more appropriate and compatible uh, in terms of land use and density for this context. The requested variances to permit the reduced side yard setbacks is minor as the building envelope is proportionate and appropriately responds to the proposed lot widths with a very consistent built form and scale along this streetscape. The proposed yard setbacks again are consistent with the existing or approved homes in the neighborhood, including severally, several newly developed houses, as well as uh, matches the side yard conditions of the existing semis to the east. Um, so you'll note um, properties highlighted in blue in the image to the right that are examples of homes with existing uh, reduced side yard setbacks, as well as the conditions proposed for the adjacent property to the west. 
design elements, including a rear deck entrance along the most easterly and westerly lot lines um, has been proposed. And these are inset to create added buffering and space between the dwellings, um, as well as strategic window placement to mitigate privacy and overlook concerns that have also been introduced. And there's been significant amount of consultation undertaken with the neighboring property owners to ensure they're comfortable and satisfied with um, the window locations. And they're also uh, happy with the design elements with the separated um, rear deck entrances. Next slide, please. Again, I've touched on it all, touched on it already, but this is a very unique grading situation because of the former Cole Avenue condition. Um, so with the 0.54 grade increase, this allows for appropriate drainage and water management. And the grading plan, uh, though it's not actually required at this stage in the process, has been reviewed extensively by city engineering staff and has been approved in concept. Um, and that's just to ensure that we've done the due diligence to ensure that the height increase request will exactly match what will and indeed be the end result and condition required uh, upon development. Uh, this proposed flat roof design is also lower than the existing semis to the east, as well as recently approved conditions to the west, which was a uh, permitted height of 10 meters. Um, and then design elements like front facade articulations, they provide high quality urban design and soften massing from the streetscape. Uh, so this, the proposed um, building height will not um, have any, the increase will not have any effect on the streetscape character and will be highly compatible with the existing conditions and proposed okay. conditions. Okay. In terms of the front facing attached garages on the next slide, um, this request is minor. The streetscape character analysis results demonstrate that nine properties do not have front facing attached garages and eight properties do. So there's only a difference of one garage condition um, that would otherwise permit this application to proceed as of right. Uh, the streetscape character analysis results again, do not factor in corner lots. So directly across from this property at the intersection of Cole Avenue and Avondale Avenue, there is a single detached dwelling with an attached front facing garage. It faces onto Cole Avenue and therefore it is not considered, but it does form part of the overall streetscape character. And that is the same condition for just down the street at the corner of Roosevelt. Um, so if considering those two additional properties only, this project uh, would be permitted as of right. And that's not factoring in extending those conditions even just one block further to the east and west along either side. Um, again, this property is flanked immediately by front facing attached garages, existing conditions, both to the east and west, with one of them being paired, giving the appearance of actually a double garage. Um, so the proposed development will be certainly in keeping with the existing character and conditions of the community. Any potential impacts from the introduction of a garage have been mitigated with the introduction of high quality urban design and materiality for the door. And the door is further recessed from the front wall of the street, placing less prominence on um, parking in the garage facade with the canopy and the front entrance being located at grade and drawn closer to the street, um, providing that interesting articulation and interaction with the pedestrian realm. So we are of the opinion that this request in this case is minor. Um, the proposal, next slide, meets the intent and purpose of both existing and new official plans by providing a very appropriate form of gentle intensification that's compatible from a design perspective while meeting all but four zoning provisions. Uh, this proposal introduces ground-oriented oriented family-sized units that are appropriate massing and scale for the community. Um, and they're compatible with uh, the existing and surrounding conditions. Soft landscaping is retained on site and trees are to be protected with new trees to be planted. And this proposal truly rectifies an existing grading issue and potential water management issue on site while respectfully responding to its existing surroundings. And being adjacent to the Dover Court Rec Recreation Center to the south with no rear neighbors, this is an excellent location for two new family sized houses. Uh, the proposal meets the intent of the zoning uh, with next slide. Uh, the lot width intention is to ensure that there's appropriate building separation, open space and lot consistent lot fabrics for all development forms across the Westboro development overlay. And this is consistent across uh, the majority of proposed uses with the exception of semi-detached and townhouse dwellings. Um, the proposed sites can manage on-site impacts of the reduction with proposed green space, soft landscaping, setbacks, 
adequate window placement um, and complementary height and design. So the development of these two singles allows for increased open space and soft landscaping actually compared to a semi-detached dwelling, which would overall have a larger massing and reduced side yard by a total width of 2.4 meters across the entire depth of the property. And again, this proposed um, lot width exceeds zoning requirements for lot area and therefore um, is very appropriate and compatible with the intent of the uh, zoning bylaw. The interior side yard setback reduction, um, again, this intent is to ensure that multi-unit buildings and singles are all sell held to the same standard to provide uh, one and a half meter separation for access to rear yards. And that intention is um, for maintenance equipment, garbage, so forth. Um, so this proposed design appropriately achieves this by proposing a side yard setback condition that is very um, workable and appropriate for a single detached dwelling rather than what would be required and, and needed, which would be much on more onerous if this were to be a low rise apartment building, for example. And there are many other examples of a 1.2 meter side yard setback in the community. Um, so it'll be a consistent and very proportionate built form. Um, this uh, ultimately is required in order to provide a livable floor plate um, and to ensure that the uh, development, um, again, has a proportionate built form and is not sort of an, a long, sort of narrow and tall building on the site. Um, and that certainly is achieved through this design. It's very compatible and appropriate. Okay. Uh, next slide, building height. Um, again, this is an issue of measuring from the existing average grade before development as opposed to the proposed grade, which again, truly needs to be accomplished. Um, and this is uh, um, again, directly coming from the city engineering staff that the site cannot be development developed in its current grading format. Um, so this, this building height and the proposed lifting of grade will respond to that requirement. Um, and truly the existing average grade is just not an appropriate benchmark for height measurement once grade is, is uh, brought up to its required standard for drainage and water management. Again, the grade matches exactly the proposed increase. Um, so when measured from the more appropriate new average grade as opposed to existing, it'll still be eight and a half meters complying with the zoning bylaw as of right if this were a typical grading situation. So we do feel that this meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. And lastly, for the front-facing attached garage, um, this development does prioritize soft landscaping, tree protection, and compatibility with the community. The garage door is further recessed from the front facade for additional um, setbacks and to lessen, lessen its visual impacts, and it's bordered by um, existing conditions with uh, front-facing attached garages. There's again only a difference of one permitted, and if it were to if this SCA was including um, other properties on site that should theoretically be counted towards the overall streetscape character, then this would be compliant. Right. Finally, the proposed variances facilitate the appropriate and gentle intensification of the site. I will go to the next, oh, but you're already ahead of me. Um, in sympathetic in terms of lot size, massing and scale to the existing neighborhood. There's many examples of similar lot widths that are narrower than permitted under this bylaw, as well as newer construction, including singles and semis, which have 1.2 meter side yard setbacks. Again, building height is a very technical uh, request that ref reflects this lot's former history is Cole Avenue, and it rectifies the existing grading conditions um, with a very reasonable and appropriate um, requested building height increase. The proposed garages offer much needed space for storage of household waste, maintenance equipment, bicycles, and so forth that are necessary for a family living in the urban area, and again, are very typical for this community. Um, so this proposed development, again, offers opportunity for a diversity of ground-oriented and family-sized housing in the urban area and fits and functions well in the community. Um, there was extensive public consultation completed by the owner on this property. He had approached all, uh, I believe it was 20 or, or more houses on the street to provide information regarding the proposal and invite any additional questions or uh, feedback on the proposal. He, was, he received seven letters of support from the immediate neighbors in the community as well as uh, a letter of support from the Westboro Community Association uh, following consultation that we had completed with them. And I believe the committee has that on file. Yes, we do. And I'm just gonna end with the next slide, which is actually just a, a nice 
sort of practical and real world example of this development and what it may look like. Um, so the owner has successfully implemented a similar size and scale of development in this neighborhood on Edison Avenue, um, which received similar type variances as those requested today. Um, though, of course, it's not applicable in terms of today's variances requests. I think it's valuable to see an existing built out condition that exemplifies implementation of similar variances and design and a design that was quite well received by the community in that area. So given these factors, the requested variances we feel meet the four tests under section 45 of the planning act and the severance criteria under 5124 representing good land use planning. And I'm very happy to answer any questions that the committee may have. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Doe. Ms. Uh, Ms. McLean, you had questions or comments? I just wondered if you could tell us what the additional setback of the garage is from the front wall. Um, if you just bear with me for one moment so I can pull the site plan, I will give you that exact dimension. And actually, if the committee coordinators can place the site plan on the screen, I think that might be quite helpful. I believe it's 0 0.6 meters further recessed. Um, at, so it meets, oh, sorry, let me just pull up the site plan so I don't uh, give you the wrong information, sorry. So the setback line of the garage, um, so the front, the way that the, and perhaps the architect could actually speak to this a little bit better because he understands the design through and through. The setback of the garage line is recessed the 6.6 meters from the front wall of the building, but then there's an additional, I believe it's a brick facade um, that adds some additional buffering and visual, um, sort of visual concealing of the garage door. Um, Justin, could you explain that situation a little bit for me, Justin Sagan, he's the project architect. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Jessica. Appreciate that. Um, so just the, the front garage door does conform with the bylaw requirements to be set back 0.6 meters from the front property line. Um, it's just done in a way that it's articulated so that part of the facade does meet the front property line, whereas the garage access and its door itself is recessed at 0.6 meters just to hide the door even more when compared to the rest of the front facade. So I hope that uh, clarifies. Hi, uh, yes, thank you. I believe we also have, uh, th thank you, Ms. Dehu. I think we have uh, Ms. Mitchell from the Westboro Community Association who wishes to speak to this application. Yeah, hi, we just wanted to provide our support for this application. Um, we find the design very attractive and we feel it will enhance this particular block on Avondale. This site is very thorny. Um, it's very difficult to work with. Um, and we're very pleased that someone has chosen to take it on and add to the attractive feeling uh, of the neighborhood. The majority of the homes on this block, both old and new, from our point of view, do have front facing garages. Um, and as long as it's not a big double or, uh, or two side by side, we're, we're content with that very much. Um, we really appreciate the way the neighbors have been consulted. Um, I won't repeat, uh, Jessica has already, uh, has already explained to you that uh, many neighbors have been consulted as, as have we. And it's not just um, a letter in the mailbox, there have been meetings held where there have been fulsome discussions. Um, that's really all we wanted to say. We give our full support for this. We think um, the real problem here is this grading issue. Uh, we hope you'll take that into consideration. In, in a funny way, it's almost like if the grading was the way it should be, they won't need to worry about, like the height would be, they wouldn't be coming to you about the height. Um, Westboro is notoriously squishy. There's lots of water running around and um, we're actually really happy uh, that this is gonna be dealt with because um, with a different kind of development, I would worry about um, the water moving around into different, different areas of the neighbors and so on. So um, that's really all we have to say. We appreciate uh, the consultation. We appreciate the design. We think it's sensitive. Um, and there has been no complaint. Our board has received no complaints or issues uh, around this project. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. Any other comments, questions from the members of the panel? All right. Are we prepared to vote on this application as presented to us? 
the stove. Sorry, no. Mr. Chair, if we could just uh, quickly go through the conditions of severance for this. Um, Craig, uh, Mr. Hamilton and I, as well as Nancy have had a number of uh, discussions regarding the conditions as they're listed in the planning report. And we've agreed that there would be some uh, minor revisions dealt with on the floor today, if that's okay. Well, let's go through them. I've got nine on my list, uh, cash and loop. Revised site and or grading plan with driveway services, retaining wall and grading situated to reduce excavation within the critical root zone. So tree, plant, tree planting plan, uh, prior to issuance of building permit to owners entering into a development agreement or letter of understanding for tree securities, existing dwelling removed and services capped, independent services confirmed, accessory structure demolished, relocated, Grading and drainage plan, obviously, and a development agreement for an asphalt overlay, as well as Bell's easement request. So which ones need to be modified? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, condition number two was a product of um, the initial circulation, which we had not yet had the opportunity to recirculate the TIR and grading plan for Nancy and Craig's review. Um, so this actually has been dealt with and we would request its removal today. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That is correct. We are comfortable with having that removed. So we're deleting, we're deleting condition two. That's correct. Right. The second revision would be to condition number four um, through conversations with the very minimal impacts that will be anticipated to the black walnut tree that is on the east uh, border of the property in the right of way. Um, Nancy has confirmed that she would be comfortable and sorry, Nancy, for speaking for you, but uh, that um, the securities would be held for a period of two years as opposed to three years. Ms. Young? Yes, thank you. I can confirm that I'm okay with uh, that being changed to two years. Okay, so it's two years versus three years for the securities. Okay, anything else, Ms. Doe? Uh, the final thing would just be for committee's record. I understand um, through conversation with Mr. Hamilton that the additional comments are mostly for information purposes. However, we felt um, that there's a few that are actually quite conflicting to some of the points that are um, raised throughout this application. Um, and we were hoping for their removal. And that would be for number seven, which is that the existing grading and drainage patterns must not be altered um, due to the existing site grading issues that we've discussed today. And that would also, uh, we would also request the removal of, uh, sorry, comment number 11. Um, this is an existing driveway condition and we do have written confirmation from the right of way department that the one and a half meter setback between the driveway and utility pole is not required and they are satisfied with the proposal as it currently is. Mr. Hamilton. To eliminate any confusion, we're happy to remove those additional comments. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Ms. Doe? That's it from my end. Thank you. Okay. So in the matter of uh, 424 Avondale Avenue, um, <clears throat> as presented today and with the amendments to the, uh, to the explanation of the variances, the zoning description, and the requested conditions, all in favor of this application. Application is approved. Good luck with your project. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Now, finally, we'll go back to item number six on the agenda. Is Ms. Sinclair there? 296 Metcalf. Ms. Sinclair. Yes. All right. We've had discussions with the applicant regarding the restriction of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, permission to those two uses. Yes, I've had an opportunity to speak with uh, the parties, and they are agreeable to the restriction to the the dental um, office laboratory and practice. So okay, so we'll put a condition in then to uh, to. Uh, for a medical, medical facility limited to those two uses. Okay. All right. So with that, um, any comments or questions from the members of the panel? All right. 
We vote on this all in favor of the permission application for 296 Metcalf Street as modified More discussions. Right. Your application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, members of committee. Thank You're you. Welcome. And that concludes the, uh, the normal agenda for today. We will now move into.